Hello folks, it's Daniel here from Shoot Create Captivate. Today we're going to be talking about chromatic aberration. I'm going to explain what it is and how we can get rid of it. So we've got this image of Amy up here on our screen. This is shot with an 85 millimeter 1.2. And when I zoom into my image, I'm getting all of this color distortions along the edges of my image. Okay, this is known as chromatic aberration or commonly known as color fringing. It's basically a color distortion that creates an outline of unwanted color along the edges of objects in a photograph, okay? Or this particular image right here. You can see here that we've got this definitive green line running along the edges of Amy's dress. On the opposite side here, on this part of her dress, we've got purple fringing going along all in these areas over here. In fact, when we look inside the pattern of her dress, look at those little spots of like a a very light pinky purple color all along the stems over here. So chromatic aberration is really defined by these two colors, green and magenta or purple, okay? Now, how do we get rid of that inside of Lightroom? It's very simple. All you need to do is go down to the lens corrections panel, okay? You might see it looks like this, where you've got profile ticked and nothing else ticked over here. What we're going to do here, first of all, is put a little tick mark next to remove chromatic aberration. But first of all, before I do that, let me just zoom into the image here. Now I'm going to tick this, and you'll notice that very little happens. If it's off and on, it makes a, a very, very small change there, but none dramatic enough to actually remove that green line there. And that's because this particular lens displays these aberrations quite fiercely. It's, it's, it's well known for its chromatic aberration, in fact, okay? It's a nice lens to shoot at 1.2, but when starting to shoot out at these wider apertures on these older lenses, chromatic aberration is something that you might have to contend with, okay? It's not going to happen with all lenses shooting wide open. An example of that is the 200mm f1.8 at f1.8 here, doesn't actually display any color distortion along these edges. Now, uh, this chromatic aberration happens in areas of high contrast, okay, where there's a very high definitive contrast between light areas and dark areas, like we have here, okay. We've got this lightness of Amy's dress against a very dark background over here, and this is where we're starting to see these little fringes happen along our our edges of our objects over here, in, in this case, Amy's dress. Now it is, in all intents of purposes, a lens failure as such, okay? It's the lens failure to focus all of the colors to the same point on our camera sensor. And this is what's creating these little anomalies along the edges of our objects over here in this particular scene. So let's get down to removing that. Now when I check this little box over here, you would have seen it made little to no difference to that aberration, to those color fringes, okay? What we need to do is simply move over to where it says manual, and once that's ticked, you're gonna have all of these options right here, okay? You'll notice there's one there for purple, that little purple slider right there, and this one over here for green. So those are the two primary colors that you're gonna see when it comes to chromatic aberrations, okay? You're not gonna really see any other kind of odd colors. That would be very, very strange. <laughs> Right, so we're going to zoom into this little area over here where we saw the green fringe, and we're going to correct that by simply adjusting the slider over here, the green slider in this case, okay? So I'm going to ramp it up to about six, and you'll notice that we've gotten rid of that green fringe right there. So before and after. Now you'll notice that there is some remaining green along these little edges over here, but that's not quite as green as the green that the range that Lightroom is looking at over here. So what we need to do is actually move this little slider over to the left here to pick up more of those yellowy green colors. Look at that. We've just got rid of that little extra piece there that was remaining. So before and after, we've gotten rid of our green aberration or green fringing, okay? Now just be careful when we're sliding these sliders around, just be very conscious of these little areas coming back into view here. So there we go. It's round about there. That's the happy medium, okay? Now when we move over to this side of the image, okay, we can look at these other areas here. Between the little details on these little floral patterns of Amy's dress, we can see inside there, that's, that's all purple inside there, along the stems of the lavender here. I mean, 
<laughs> it's almost as purple as, as the actual lavender itself, okay? So what we need to do here is minimize this. Now we're gonna run into a potential issue here and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens. If I ramp this little purple slider up over here, you'll start seeing immediately that we've got this little gray outline over here. This is the, 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 the system trying to get rid of those red and very deep purple colors. And what it's doing is it's running slightly into Amy's skin tones as well, because in this area, where the shadow is, there's a lot of like purpley dark reds inside there. Okay, so you're gonna see a little purple, or sorry, a little gray outline along these areas, okay? If I ramp this up further, that gray line becomes quite thick there and very noticeable. But at the same time, looking at all of the purple that we had in between the floral patterns of Amy's dress here, it's disappeared completely. Let's have a look before and after. We've gotten rid of that purple fringing right there. Now along Amy's arm over here, that looks all fine. And inside this area over here, I, I could say that we could leave it like this, but I don't wanna introduce too much of a thick gray line here. So I'm just gonna back this off a tiny little bit, okay? I'm gonna pull it back to where it is fairly acceptable. I think in this case over here, that's as good as it's gonna really get. I mean, we can, come in here and move this little slider over here to select more of the reds, uh, but that's not really helping us. I may slide this amount back to maybe three over here, and you know, this is as good as it's gonna get, to be honest. We've removed quite a bit there, okay? It's not a magic wand that's gonna get rid of it completely, uh, and to be honest, this lens aberration, or the aberration, or chromatic aberration on this particular lens is quite severe. So we need to look at, minimizing it as best we can, okay? If we look at this before and after, that is a considerable uh, jump there. It looks a lot better. It's not so purpley in those areas of high contrast, okay? So we're dealing with the chromatic aberration uh, from a slider perspective over here. Now, one of the things you could do, let's just reset this quickly. We could use the little Eyedropper tool. Let's zoom into that perp, uh, into this green fringe, not purple, <laughs> this green fringe right here. And we'll grab our little ink dropper and we'll sample. It says there, pick a fringe color. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to pick that fringe color and kaboom. It's gotten rid of that chromatic aberration on that edge there. Okay. It's doing it as best as it can. Now, you'll notice that there's a difference between this area and that area, just as we saw before. So again, I would say I've got a little bit better control here when I'm actually moving the slider to where I want it to be and then coming in here and then adjusting this side of our slider to pick up some more of those yellowy green hues, okay? And we success successfully getting rid of that green fringe there, okay? Again, we can come to this side of Amy where the purple fringing is very, very strong. Again, we can grab the little I drop a tool and then sample right in this little area right here, pick that fringe color. And again, you know, it's it's picking up and throwing in a lot of grays in those areas there because it can't really decipher the, the transition from those tonalities into Amy's skin. So again, that is a little bit of a challenge here. We may have to, you know, readjust the sliders over here so it doesn't run in or bleed into the skin tone colors there. But, it's a vast improvement from where we were um, before and after getting rid of those little purple hints or those purple fringes and the green fringes on the side of our image. So there you have it. This is a very basic overview of how to, how to correct this lens anomaly under the lens correction options. This whole panel over here, in fact, is dedicated to lens corrections, okay? Uh, one of the things that you can see with this 85 1.2 is a bit of a vignette that's going on around the image. Uh, I mean, shooting at f1.2, it's expected with this lens. Now you can enable the profile corrections right here, and Bob's your uncle. There we have the fringing, or sorry, the not the fringing in this case, but rather the vignetting along the edges of the image, and we've sorted that out, okay? What this does is it picks up the lens profile automatically. If you find that it doesn't, all you can do is just make sure you pick your camera manufacturer or lens manufacturer, whatever it might be, in this case it's Canon, 
If you don't see your lens listed, go down to the drop box and then you can go and find the specific lens, okay? And then it will correct that vignetting automatically for you. Sometimes I actually switch this off because I like a little bit of a natural vignette. In this case here, I'll switch it on because it adds a little bit more color into the lavender right here. So folks, there you have it, chromatic aberration in a short, quick tip tutorial. Thank you very much for your awesome support and we'll see you in the next session. Cheers for now.